I yeah. think that might be a really good place there's, to there's, start. There's a lot going on. <laughs> so um, it starts off with Edward, played by Sebastian Stan in prosthetics. Um, and very good prosthetics. We've got Mike Marino, who's the same guy that does the Penguin, to do the, the makeup. Just, you know, a smiling actor, does a lot of kind of those ghastly HR, being nice to your, this is your colleague's videos. Has a new neighbour move in who's a playwright, played by Renato Rinze, from Worst Person in the World. They sort of form a, a relationship. And then he gets offered this reconstructive surgery or, or procedure, ends up looking like Sebastian Stan, reconnects with Renata's character, Ingrid, who's written a play about his life. He auditions for it, gets it. But then my character, Oswald, comes in and just hijacks his entire existence. So that's the, that's the movie version. In yeah. real life, when you got this script and saw this opportunity, what did you think? I had worked with the director on a previous film called Chain for Life. So he'd essentially written this role for me. And so you, you get it, you read it. I thought, brilliant, we're doing, we're doing Charlie Kaufman here. It's so dark, so twisted, so funny. So I was in from the word go. And then James then moved on really, really quickly. And I think next thing you know, you're in New York with Sebastian Stan shooting a movie. It's interesting, isn't it, because I suppose one of the things that you discover as you go along is that Sebastian Stan's character misses his old life. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Why do you think that is? Well, I, I think we all think the grass is going to be greener on the other side. And then we get there and find out often it isn't. The actor Jim Carrey once said that, um, one day I wish everyone could get all their hopes and dreams. That way they'll realise it isn't enough. And we all carry our own little low self-esteem machines in our pocket and we're forever doom-scrolling and comparing our behind-the-scenes living to other people's greatest hits and thinking that that's normal in some way, shape or form. And I think every now and then we need to do a little bit of a mental health check, look up from our phones and maybe even get over ourselves <laughs> a little bit. So Sebastian Stan's character has the surgery, changes his look, but realises that he misses his old <clears throat> self. I mean, what, yeah. what kind of message do you want people who see the film to, well, to take mean, from that? I mean, it, you know, is who we are on the outside, who we are on the inside. If we get everything we want all at once, will we still be happy? And it, it's all, how do we see ourselves? How do we see other people? And how does all that kind of interplay in, in the world and our, our existence around us? Here's a $60 million question then. If changing ourselves on the outside doesn't make us happy, what does? I think we need to surround ourselves with good people. I think we need to be kinder to ourselves. I think we need to all spend less time on social media. I've certainly been spending less recently and had a real sort of like, um, dark night of the soul, if you will, in, in how I use it. And I think we need to find little things, because life is busy. Right, and you can't just mess around all the time, but I think we all need to find little things in life that give us joy, whether that's kind of good coffee, like board gaming, hanging out with friends, and just do those every now and again and take a break from all the noise that surrounds us. Is that you subtly telling us you want a coffee, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> I've got one. It sounds okay. like John Kay's life, yeah, coffee, exactly. board games. Well, okay. yeah. I mean, you, you made a, a Horizon documentary, didn't you, uh, mm -hmm. with your twin brother? Yeah, my amazing BBC. twin. Your amazing twin, uh, which is uh, astonishingly powerful. There it is. There, there are the two of you together. So in a documentary, you changed the conversation and educated all of us. How does making a movie, a fictional piece, mm -hmm. Compare with making a, a real-life current affairs documentary? They're, they're very different. Do documentary, I mean, they're, they're both storytelling. They do, they do have that golden thread running through them. I think in, in filmmaking, it could have been really easy to make a film that was quite finger-waggy and quite preachy and that held up kind of placards to an audience. I, I have no interest in changing what people think. I think if you come at it with a much smarter approach and hold up mirrors, rather than placards, rather than changing what an audience thinks for a little while, you can change how they think for the rest of our lives. I often said to our, our director, good cinema can change what you think, and great cinema can change, will change how you think. Let's all be in the great cinema game.
And, and what's the change that you want from this? In terms of how people think, what would you like? I, I want people to go away, just think about how, who am I, who are we? And because and this one asks, asks a lot of questions and doesn't give all the answers, I'm not a fan of hand-holding in sort of like long-form narratives. And, and whatever people come away thinking or whatever conversations happen, as long as people are talking, it can only be a good thing, as far as I'm concerned. I know you say you're spending less time on social media, but I bet you were looking at the reviews <laughs> when they came out. And they have, uh, I mean, they've been outstandingly good. It's been really well received. You've won all kinds of awards <clears throat> already. But I know there was one particular film critic <laughs> that you wanted to make oh, happy. Oh, my word. So <laughs> let, let, let's rewind to nearly midnight on Thursday the 3rd. All the embargoes are about to drop, and I'm like, oh, I hope Mark Commode likes it. <laughs> he, Just Mark Commode. He, he's a very well-established and well-respected film reviewer, and he says something's bad. He, he has the power to torpedo entire movies <laughs> in the UK. And tell us, what did Mark Commode think? He said, my performance, the film Smart is doing something different, and my performance is really good and on, on the money and disarming. So when, when I heard that, I was like, oh, finally. <laughs> just 11 minutes of watching a video, just being like on edge, just like, like holding the dog way too tightly. <laughs> and then when it, when it got a good review, I could be, oh, I can breathe. Oh, that's fantastic. And what's next, Adam? What, what, what's in the pipeline? Oh, I'm taking everything as it comes at the moment. I, I've surrounded myself with a good team professionally who helped me make smart decisions, I've got really good mates back in Croydon that keep me grounded and don't let me get kind of swept up in my own hype, <laughs> if, if you will. And a twin brother. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and a twin brother who now believes that I'm famous. <laughs> yeah. So for years, my family have been like, sorry, we just don't believe you're famous. I think I've made my point now, though. Okay, and, yeah, yeah I've got, got a thing in an edit at the moment that should be done by November. Great. Then got a couple of meetings coming up about some potentially exciting... But so yeah, what what's this place? You've not seen the last of me on well, this sofa. Hopefully we will see you here on this sofa <laughs> again very soon. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, well done. Thank it's, you. Adam. Uh, it's a fantastic piece. And a different man is out now in cinemas. It's really clever.